back to the tin barn. I'm Pragmatic Lee, and this week we're going to finish up uh, what we started in the last video, where I took this piece of uh, took a piece of raw material that was given to me by a viewer, and cut out this uh, uh, drive dog lathe dog drive plate. Uh, I didn't realize it at the time I published that video, but uh, the viewer Larry Robinson that donated the piece of raw stock had actually recorded uh, cutting that stock out with his uh, uh, plasma cutter. Put a link to uh, uh, cards up here to, to the two videos, or uh, two, two short videos on cutting this piece of raw stock out. Check out those videos and also Larry's channel. Now, the way these cards up here work is when you get to the end of the video, uh, there'll be a, the little letter I uh, for information, if you will, up here in the corner. Click that I. Don't do it now until after you finish watching this video, but click that I, and then there'll be direct links to Larry's videos. What we're going to do today to finish this up, if you recall in the last video, this is what goes in my uh, spindle on the lathe. I want the front edge of the material to line up with the back edge of this point on the dead center. That way the legs on the uh, uh, lathe dogs don't have to reach out so far. Now in the other tools that mount to the lathe, the studs for them mount like such, right tied up against this. And then this goes through the uh, flange on the spindle with the nut behind it. There's a, there's a ring that turns, and this nut locks down on it. We need to space this out. We need, uh, I think uh, it turned out to be 0.96 inches in between. I won't go over to the, uh, to the lathe. I've got a print here, but I'll set that print up and show you what we're going to uh, what we're going to cut out. Well, there'll be uh, some turning in this and some uh, metric thread cutting. Now I have another video very similar to this where I made a set of these studs to go uh, on the face plate for the lathe. This is going to be very similar, uh, but as I said before, uh, there's going to be a step in between here, almost a one inch extension in there. So let me turn around to the lathe and we'll show you, I'll show you what uh, what the plan today is. I've gone ahead and uh, machined the length three pieces of this one inch stock that we'll use to make uh, our mounting studs with. This end of the stud down here will be the threaded end that the nut will go on. This three quarter inch section right here will be what actually sl slides through the uh, uh, plate on the end of the spindle. This thread down here is what will thread into the uh, drive plate that we just finished making. And this one inch section in the middle, which will be uh, uh, 0.96 in length, is not on this. It'll be in between this piece and the threaded stud out the end. So that will set it off so that hopefully in the end, the, the edge of the drive dog plate comes out right with the taper, the large part of the taper on the uh, dead center. So I'm going to get set up with the uh, uh, collet chuck, and we'll come right back and start turning these pieces. Our first step on this will be the threaded step for the nut that holds, holds on to the spindle. That's at 0.7 inches, and then we have a 0.54 that is the thickness of, uh, of the piece that will go through this flange. Those combined is 1.24 inches. So what I'm going to do is zero out my DRO at this point. And come into 1.24. And 
I'll set my carriage stop, lock it in place down here. And I'll be sure it's clean and the surface that bumps is clean. So that's, that's re repeating dead on 1.24. So we're going to take this down to uh, our largest diameter, which is uh, 0.75. I think I'm going to change that uh, tip out. This was uh, the tip on this uh, insert is the one I finished up turning the outside of the piece of raw stock. So I'll come back when we get that set up. Okay, I put another insert on, fresh tip on, made a, made a pass through there, took a measurement, and got a uh, dimension set on the DRO. So we've got about 184 more thousandths to go. Now I'm going to do this about 60 thousandths at a time. That's 30 off of each side. All right, the DRO says we have about 10 or 11 thousandths left to go. So let's uh, get another measurement. 762, so that's 12 more thousandths to go. Uh, we'll come down to zero on the DRO and then take one more measurement. Point seven four seven. And three thousandths. So now we're going to come in. Our first step is at point seven. So we'll bring the uh, uh, that's still zero on the end. So we'll come back, come down to point seven inches, and move the uh, carriage stop down to it. All right, and we want to take this down to a dimension of 0.394, which is 10 millimeter. Six, seven, three. All right, I'm going to set up a dimension on the uh, on the DRO. All right, we've got 278,000 to go here. Ten more thousands to go. All right, I'm going to move the carriage stop out of the way right now. And we're going to put a little uh, chamfer on each one of these uh, shoulders here. These shoulders up here, I'm just going to, just going to put a very light chamfer on them just to break that edge. And on this end, I'm going to put just a little heavier because that's what the lead in for the thread will be. And just kind of round that off for that thread. Now, before we take this out, I want to go ahead and put some thread, and put our thread relief in. And I think that should be plenty deep for 10 millimeter thread. All right, I'm going to turn turn this piece around in the chuck now. All right, 
this shoulder is going to be 0.68 just to be sure I got enough sticking out of the uh, chuck Like before, zero out the DRO, come in our 0.68, zeroed out the wrong axis, the Z. Alright, we got 538 thousandths to go here. This will come down to the 10 millimeter size as well uh, for, uh, and be threaded. and six we got 12 more thousands to go and just like the other end we'll put some thread relief on here So here's our first piece roughed out. This will be the thread in that goes, well this will be the shoulder that goes in the uh, spindle flange, uh, tighten on the back. This is our space in between and then this will be threaded into the uh, drive plate. I want to do the same thing to the other two pieces of raw stock and then I'll bring you back when we get ready to uh, uh, start turning some threads. All right, I got our pieces roughed out now, got all the steps cut, the thread relief on each one. Before we start cutting the threads, uh, I've got one of them loaded in the uh, in a three quarter inch chuck now, three quarter inch collet. Uh, this is good nominal size right here, the three quarter that uh, that we machined over on the lathe. So I've got it on in the collet now, and I'm gonna put a couple of flats on this spacer uh, section. Uh, that will be, when I put these in, I'll likely put them in with Loctite and will probably never come out again. But uh, just in case, I want a couple of flats on there so that I can take them out if I ever need to. And I'm going to take these down. This, this center section was one inch stock that we were using. I'm going to take 65 thousandths off of each side or off of two sides. And that should bring it down to about three quarters. And I'm just setting this up where the edge of the collet is with the edge of the uh, vise. A seven eighths wrench fits on that fine. I'm going to do that to the other two pieces and then we'll go over to the lathe and start cutting some threads. Okay, we're going to start cutting the threads now. I've got one of our work pieces in the collet. And when I did the video sometime back uh, where I was making a couple of these uh, mounting studs for the face plate, one of my viewers commented that uh, they would never single point thread anything less than uh, 12, 15 millimeter. Uh, this is 10 millimeter. And I might do it with a die myself if I had a uh, 10 millimeter die, 10 by one and a half, but I don't, so I'm going to single point this. Um, I've got one of the pieces in here now, and I've got you backed off pretty far now so that you can get an idea of what I'm doing. Uh, down here, this hand, you can't see it now, but this, this is, I'm locking in the half nuts. My lathe the lead screw on my lathe is imperial. 
Uh, we're cutting metric threads. So I'm going to leave the uh, half nuts engaged. I've actually got a piece of tape. Let me turn down there so you can see what I'm talking about. I've got this piece of tape put on there now. Just as a reminder not to reach for that and disengage it when I get to the end of my threads. What I'm going to do instead is I will kill power to the lathe up here when I get to the end of my thread. I'll put the lathe in reverse, back the compound off, power the lathe back up. It will move away from the work, stop the lathe, put it back in forward, advance the compound back to zero, uh, the cross slide back to zero, and then advance the compound. About, uh, I'm going to, let's see, each one of these, well, it's, I'm, at a, I'm at the 29 degree angle. Uh, so I'm just going to keep advancing them, advancing the compound in until I've got the thread looking right and then we'll actually test it with a 10 by one and a half nut. On cutting one of the other threads, I'll try to bring in a little closer so that you can actually see the thread cutting. Half nuts engaged. Uh, cross slide is zeroed out. Compounds at zero. Lays and forward speed looks about right. See, I hadn't advanced it though, so let's advance it. Stop the lathe, put it in reverse, back the cross slide up, power up the lathe. Stop the lathe, put it back and forward, bring our cross slide back to zero, and advance the compound. I will get my pitch gauge just to be sure I got the correct change gears in, and that is correct. Alright, this looks like a good point to to make a pass without advancing the uh, cross slide. Just to clean it up, take any spring out of it. Alright, let's see how close we are. We're starting on, but not quite there yet. There's a good, nice, snug thread. A couple little burrs on it. And I'm going to make one more pass without advancing the cross slide. Okay, I'm happy with that. So I'm going to turn this around to the other end of this piece. Then we'll do the same thing to the other two pieces. Before I finish up, I'll get the camera around where you can actually see some of the thread cutting going on. All right, I'm down to my final thread now. Got everything reset. And got you a little bit closer here so you can actually see what you're looking for here as we're, since we're cutting threads by advancing the compound, you'll see that the cut is only on the leading side of the cutting tool. I'm not using a plunge. I'm going in at 29 degrees. So I think we're ready to go. That's the compound.
Okay, now we're going to make a spring pass without advancing the compound. And when I back off on this pass, I'm going to back off a little, right much further than necessary to give me a little bit of filing time just to knock the top edge off of these threads. Sorry about bumping the camera. There we have another 10 by one and a half pitch thread. So that's it. I'm going to get the pieces mounted on the uh, uh, the drive plate, get the collet chuck off, and we'll give this a test run. All right, I have the threads cut on both ends of all three pieces. Now we'll mount these pieces on our drive plate that we made in the previous video. Okay, and I realized I uh, didn't have any more 10 millimeter nuts around here, so I borrowed a couple or three off of the collet chuck. Alright, we'll put our MT3 adapter and dead center, MT5 to MT3 adapter and MP3 dead center. Got that honed. Now the way the spindle works on my lathe is this ring on the back back here which has a slot hole in it big enough for the uh, nut to go through. Then it rotates over to a slot that's the size of the uh, bolt or the stud, which is 10 millimeter. Okay, I realize the uh, camera's kind of in there closed now, but this was I thought was maybe the best place to uh, to show you this uh, drive dog or lathe dog drive plate in action. I'm sure most of you are familiar with how it works, but I've taken this one with one of the expanding mandrels, and this just happened to be a piece of scrap that I've uh, had over in my uh, scrap bin that already had a hole drilled in, an inch and a half hole. So we're going to turn this up, put that drive dog in, the leg on the drive dog in the slot we cut, bring our tail stock in. And of course, lock it down. Now we have the ability to turn now. There's no way we could hold this in the chuck to turn this outside diameter. Uh, in this case, all I'm going to do is just turn it enough just to just to see if these mandrels are going to hold. This is the absolute first time I've ever used one of these mandrels. Uh, I've done some turning between centers before, but it was. It was kind of a hodgepodge put together. So we're going to see how this works. The, uh, to tighten this piece on the mandrel, I just held it in there and then set it in the press with this across the bottom and pressed on this end just enough to get it snug. This would be an ideal uh, place for an arbor press. I don't have one now, so I simply use my 20-ton uh, hydraulic press and just put enough pressure on there where I felt this was holding good and tight. I'm not using any coolant now or any lube because I know it will slink it right back on the camera. 
and I'm taking an 80 thousandths cut now, which is 40 on each side. And of course, that'll mean a little bit more when we get a when we get a little bit more contact. We're still just on the points right now. All right, we're hitting all four points. That, this hole wasn't in the center of the scrap piece. But as you can see, what's happening over here is the drive dog, the drive plate is driving the dog just like it's supposed to do, just like it's meant to do. And just for my own sake of knowing right here, I'm going to come on the piece and on the mandrel and put a little mark, and then we'll check it after a while and be sure it's not, this is not twisting on the manual, but I'm sure it's not, but. All right, I thought I could tell from what I was hearing, but on one side, I've got uh, contact all the way around. And on the other side, like just a little bit, as I was saying, this is not in the center. And the marks, uh, see if you can, I don't know whether you can see them or not, but they're staying, so this piece is definitely not turning on the mandrel. All right, we're cleaned up all the way around now, so we'll just uh, put a little chamfer on that. That held fine. The drive plate worked fine. I want to swing the camera around. What I'm fixing to show you is really not relevant to to the uh, studs, the standoff studs, mounting studs we made for this plate. But in case you've never uh, used these kind of manuals before, I'm learning on my own right now. I'm going to swing the camera around to the press, and I'll show you how we we'll remove the workpiece. To tighten this piece up on the mandrel, both the core of the man mandrel here and the sleeve around it, both of them are tapered. So when you push it in, when you tighten it, one end is not larger than the other. It's meant to be maintained the same diameter all the way down. The way, again, that I mounted this in there was set against the sleeve and the press and then push down on the center core here. So to take it out, I was, I was setting on this and pushing down on this part of the core to tighten it up. Now to take it out, I will set this on the plates and push on this end. And I'm gonna need a, a shorter uh, Drift on there. I believe this two inch is going to be fine. one inch. And again, the sleeve is sitting on these plates right here, and I'm going to push down on the, the center part. The I'm not really sure what the correct term is, but uh, the centered taper rod. And once you get it started, then it's just a matter of, you can loosen, pull the center out, and there's the piece. Hope you've enjoyed this video and got a little something from it uh, on doing some metric tapping, uh, mounting the drive plate, 
uh, to the lathe and then doing some turning with it. Take care and I'll see you on the next video.